Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. My name is Alex. If you're new here, we're trying out a new segment here, interviews with content creators in the Halo community. And today I got Kevin here. Say what's up. Hey everyone, Kevin Kulix here. I'm glad that you actually could join me on this. I, I wanna talk about a few unique things over the span of the next, let's say 15 minutes or so, and dive into what we know is coming within the Halo universe here for the community, which is the February update focusing on the environmental team and bringing Zeta Halo to life. So when it comes to this, I've got four topics that I really just wanna discuss because I, A, haven't heard anyone talk about it as of yet, and um, B, I think it's just really interesting to dive in and speculate on how immersive this world is actually going to be, because I believe this is going to be beyond anything that we've seen in, in prior games, you know, uh, to date. So first things first, what, what do you think is going to be shown, seen, discussed in the February update? I think with this February update, I have a feeling we might get a little bit more content in the way of probably more like concept art, maybe some screenshots of just like the environment for Halo Infinite on Zeta Halo. Mm -hmm. uh, just because like the last update, we really didn't get a whole lot of content. It was, like it said, very high level updates, which is kind of the theme between this whole thing. And that last update was rather high level where it just kind of came down to more philosophies and game design really than like, hey, here's like this new thing that we have to show for you. They, they hinted at that kind of stuff, but it didn't even show or even name that kind of stuff. So I think with this next update, which again, like I said, it's gonna be probably bringing, putting a bigger emphasis on the environments within Halo, on Zeta Halo. And so I think it might see some more like concept art. I have a feeling definitely, we, I have a feeling we get some screenshots like of the actual environment in game. Okay. I mean, we, they've already, you know, shown like some more woodland kind of areas that, you know, we saw in the gameplay demo. So I would totally expect to see more of that. Maybe even showcasing like close-ups of details of different environments as well, like on these like hexagonal pillars that we see throughout the levels, mm -hmm. uh, better details on the, uh, maybe the grass and the metal stuff. Just like showing this casing, just like how the level of detail that's there because a lot of it kind of, didn't really get showcased within the last gameplay demo because of like the shadowing that was in there and the lighting not really being where it needs to be. Um, and so I think we'll get a little bit of that as well. Just, uh, just kind of overall experience to expect when it comes to Zeta Halo. I mean, we, they, they kind of referenced this back in the July, January update with talking about like the like marshy wetlands, uh, right. wooded rocky crags they mentioned as well. Um, I would also suspect to see like probably like some uh, probably like snowy areas as well. Cause I think pretty much kind of like we had like in uh, combat evolved as well. Yeah. And that, uh, that, so, that ties yeah. me in what you're talking about right here actually ties me into terrain. Like what, what terrain do you expect to see and uh, continue on with what you were doing and what you were saying. And I'll add to it cause I got a few ideas of my, my own. Yeah. So I have a feeling that this is actually probably going to be like the best looking environments we might have ever had in a Halo game just because of the design philosophy that they mentioned in the January update, saying that they started actually with like the environmental artists saying that basically make a cool looking environment and we'll make freight vehicles to work along with that. Now I'm sure that the environmental artists probably also like, well, we have to make some room for like warhogs to drive around and stuff like that, you know? So there's a little bit of like back and forth when it comes to the design philosophy of that. But mm -hmm. I would, it did seem like it, they kind of almost put like a more emphasis of more thoughtful traversal of environments according to the January updates. So I would maybe see more obstructions in the way, um, maybe something that's a little bit more interactive that you might be able to like kind of move or shove out of the way when it comes to, you know, utilizing your way, getting your way through the map and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, like there's a lot of different things that they could uh, certainly do when it comes to that kind of okay. stuff. Okay. So, and, and that's a good point. I mean, when it comes to terrain, one thing I, I remember from Halo 3, Halo, I think maybe Halo 2 had it, I know Halo CE had it, was that when you could go from an alpine environment, drive through a forerunner structure, and then come out in a snowy terrain. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially in Combat Evolved, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the unique environments like that, I think, are going to be actually now segmented through some of the hexagon pillars that we've seen, right? where essentially however we fast travel throughout this world it's it's been obvious through what we've seen in the in the in the map 
right? When you open up the map, when you're in game, that these areas are segmented. So they're, they're just like little open worlds that you can explore. And what's unique about this is that I believe this will be utilized in a way where of course there's gonna be deserts, there's gonna be snowy areas, alpine areas, there's going to be, I personally believe similar to like Halo 2, there might be some underwater elements as well, maybe underwater missions and uh, possibly space. And I, I believe that space will be a thing because of the fact that the beginning cutscene of Halo Infinite is Chief jumping out into space, right? Which is most likely either banished ship or the Guardian or uh, what they call the Harbinger, right? So, um, you know, whatever the Harbinger is. However, I, and then I also believe that inside of the ring is another environment we'll be able to actually explore. Um, not a traditional terrain, but inside of the ring, there's been an emphasis on sentinels, if you haven't seen that, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I've never seen that in the uh, the gameplay reveal, but the uh, announcement of Halo Infinite, like we saw like a warthog that looked like it was underwater and there was like, yeah, like a, some kind of sentinel enforcer kind of thing, like underwater examining it. When it comes to sentinels, when it comes to the ring, when it comes to all these different elements that we haven't seen before, the hexagons are very, very interesting. They're in every single piece of concept art. They're obviously a huge part of the game itself. My question is, how do you feel these hexagons actually play into the game? What purpose do they serve? Are they dismantling the ring or are they repairing the ring? What are your thoughts? Oh, geez, because there's a lot of different ways that 3 for 3 could go about utilizing this kind of art style to Zeta Halo. And Zeta Halo was actually, lore-wise, originally part of the original array when there were like 30,000 kilometers in diameter, I think it's something like that. Then like the floor, Forerunner Flood War happened, and I think they had to segment it down to like 10,000, but of course then we saw in the uh, Discover Hope trailer that it was like, you know, busted in half kind of thing. So right. it could be like, you know, like under repair, or maybe that's just like how the level, like how the, the ring looks or something, or possibly like, I don't know, maybe just throwing this one out there that like it could be like modular by the player in some way or another because it seems like a lot of stuff could just like be lifted up and down rather easily it doesn't really have like a gradual slope because it just kind of like abruptly goes straight up right mm -hmm. maybe you can have some way like you press like button somewhere and then it'll actually like lower down the platform so you can traverse it easier or something like that see that's <laughs> interesting because my, my, my point is that when it comes to a game, right, one of the most important elements is replayability, right? So when you're going through the campaign, imagine if this ring was destroyed for whatever reason, whether it was a banished, whether it was the harbinger, whether it was the flood, you know, if the flood returned, people have said that that large tower is the Palace of Pain. Uh, it could be a variety of different things. Who knows? We're likely wrong, right? We'll see it when we see it. Uh, and if it is the flood, by the way, I don't think that they would announce it. I think it would be something that we see in game, right? Absolutely. Think, yeah, you do not that. announce the flood coming back in Halo Infinite if they do make a return. Because that's yeah. like the whole appeal of CEs. Like, flood was just like, it was a surprise in the game. You didn't expect it. Right. Plus, exactly. honestly, it would make some great reaction videos, to be honest. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And this entire game is essentially Combat Evolved 2.0. I yeah. mean, if, if anyone's really looked at the marketing and how they've really focused on this, they're bringing the 1999 version of Halo, the concept, to life. And even Joseph Staten, you know, he, he, he said that himself. So whatever you've seen there, whatever you've seen in past Halo games, um, that, that is going to, to come back in some capacity, and I believe in a large capacity. But when it comes to these rings, or sorry, the hexagons on the ring, I believe that what it is is not dismantling. I think that something happened to destroy this ring and this game is going to have an aspect of backtracking, right? To be able to figure out what happens because you obviously got blown out into space. The pilot finds you and then what happens? You land back on the ring and you have to go find out what's going on and that's a perfect setup to understanding the ring itself, right? Because you're stepping into the shoes of a Spartan that is, you know, unaware of what has happened. So you guys are both in the same realm. Um, I believe that these hexagons are actually repairing the ring. So it, it's, it's and, and I think the sentinels are there to repair it, right? In some way. So 
let's just say, for instance, when you're playing the game, you go through an area like the demo, right? How we saw the banished AA guns and whatnot. Imagine if you backtrack through that section, right, at a later time throughout the campaign, but now it's been repaired and it's flat. It's not, mm. it's not completely vertical. I don't know how intensive that actually is for the engine or if that's even possible, but the replayability purposes of either having a flat land that goes vertical or a vertical land that goes flat, right, could be interesting, right? Or okay, maybe, absolutely. maybe it just gets dismantled altogether and it gets thrown out into space. Like, it, it, how does the environment interact? I feel like there are very unique ways that the hexagons actually influence the environment. I'm just, I'm excited to see that. But mm -hmm. um, what do you think of that? And then, and then we're going to talk about the creatures that inhabit this world because in 2018, we got a glimpse of that. Definitely got a glimpse of that, yeah. Uh, how the hexagons will play out, like, I think like, kind of like how I mentioned it, like previously saying that like, it'd be really cool if there was like some interactive ability for the player to kind of mold and change the entire situation there. So, I mean, I could totally see like a modular situation happen. Uh, yeah, I, I know you also mentioned about like it being kind of segmented out in islands as well. I think it kind of plays into like the gameplay element of Halo Infinite because one thing specifically they've never said together is open world. A lot of people have said open world. Third party, you know, reporters have said open world, but three four three themselves have never actually said open world. They've said open and expansive world. So it's because you, know, you would think if they want to press, press open world Halo, they would just say open world Halo. I think because right. What they're planning to do is to be able to tell a cohesive narrative while so, so you can still have that classic Halo feel of storytelling, uh, but while also having like an open and expansive world. It's kind of thinking what they're going to do is like the ODST kind of style of open world, where as you play it through the game, you unlock new sections where you can also backtrack. And having these island like segments of the Halo ring totally play into that style of gameplay. So I think it's kind of something along those lines that maybe as you unlock a new section, it combines like the islands together or something like that. I don't know, just different kind that, of that, ideas that right can, there for sure. That can make a lot of sense. I actually agree with that. Um, but all right, let's talk about the creatures. This will be the last thing we talk about. Um, when it comes to who inhabits the ring, right? Today on Twitter, I posted something about the blind woes, right? In 1999, when they were releasing uh, the concept for Halo, right, the trailer, um, and then even in Halo CE, I think they just cut the blind wolves out of it, right? I believe that whether it's the leviathans that fly in the sky, whether it's the blind wolves, whether it's the deer that we saw in the trailer, whether it's the rhinos, whether it's the little um, moles that we saw running around in the demo, you know, or the oh, yeah. birds. <laughs> It, there's there's a variety of different animals that are going to be all over um, this ring, and personally, I believe that they're not all going to be friendly. I think I think there's going to be a dynamic aspect in this game where the animals are actually threats as well now, similar to what we saw in Halo Reach when we encountered that massive creature. I forget exactly what was what was that called. Do you remember? Like, are you talking about the one in Halo Reach where has like the yes. big, like tusks and stuff like that? Yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, man, no, that was a that was a very surprising moment, you know? Yeah. And oh, yeah. I can only imagine like if you're running around the ring and you're on a cliffside, or you're maybe you're in a desert or something by a forerunner structure, and you see these creatures running towards you for the first time, and you think, "What is that?" And it's a bunch of blind wolves, right? Um, I know that I, I, I've heard that they're not harmful unless you actually provoke them. But uh, just think about that. Like, what, what do you think would, would come into play? Large animals, small animals? What do you think? Uh, I, think of just, I think just the fact of just adding animals into it would just make the environment feel more alive. Because these halo rings were also elements of, like, preservation as well. And they brought in different types of, like, flora and fauna onto the ring just for preservation's sake. That's why there was, like, ancient humans, I think, on Zeta Halo, if I remember correctly. That's mm -hmm. kind of maybe where we got those, you know, glyphs from the announcement trailer from. And so I could totally see, like, that just being an element just to add more liveliness to it. Um, if there's any gameplay mechanic to it, that'd be kind of – there's a million different ways they can go about doing that. I mean, they, they can go the Fallout route and maybe have to, you know, slay a blind wolf for me or something like that. Uh, I do know that uh, originally that, like, the blind wolves were going to be, like, an element in Combat Evolved where, like – you could actually could ride them 
and traverse the map, you know, right on top of a blind wolf. But then they said that the, they couldn't really get the AI to work at the time kind of thing. So they just kind of had to cut it. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, there's like, there's so many different things you can, with adding in animals, it could just be like a scenery thing. It could be a functional thing. Uh, it's, you know, there's a million different ways they can go about doing it, honestly. It's going to be interesting, man, without a doubt. Do you, one last thing, actually, this wasn't on the list, but one last thing. Um, ancient humans, you think that's going to play a big role in infinite? Oh man, that them? would, that would be really interesting. I can't name the, 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 how the timeline works off the top of my head when it comes to, um, uh, you know, ancient humans on the ring and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, like, it would, what, what was like, when was the last time the rings went off? It was like, like 50,000 years ago or something like that in mm -hmm. the Halo Lord timeline, I guess. So, I mean, if you have ancient humans over there for like 50,000 years or something, that would be kind of interesting. Um, I think it'd be kind of more if it was, I think it'd be best though, if it would probably just show like the remnants of them being on the ring. So, like, your casual player knows, like, oh my gosh. This is what you know. Halo rings were actually here for not just to blow everything up. Because I guarantee you, most people who casually play Halo or you know, will just jump in and play the campaign, just play the game, not really watch YouTube videos or you know go on different podcasts and stuff like that, probably don't even know about the preservation effect that uh, these rings were supposed to have, or you maybe even know realize that there were humans before, like you know the current knowledge of what humans have right now. I mean, there's a lot that, that can be showcased and explained by just uh, that. So, I mean, I think it also kind of plays into the the mystery aspect that I know that they're trying to bring out a lot more with Halo Infinite, you know, the mystery and exploration, the huge mm -hmm. emphasis. And I think that could definitely you know, tie into that similar theme of Halo Infinite. Okay, one final question, just a yes or no, okay? All right. Do you think the flood come back, yes or no? Yes. I'd be very surprised if they don't. Okay, same here. Man, thank you so much for uh, joining today. It's the first interview I ever did on the channel. I, so if you guys enjoyed it, leave a comment below. Kevin, thank you so much for joining, man. Um, everyone, you know, a lot of you guys actually may have come from Kevin's channel, but if anyone does not know of Kevin that is currently on my channel, please go sub to him. Link is in the bio. And uh, hopefully we get to, you know, do this again sometime. Uh, wish you well, man. Look forward to this February update, and uh, we'll we'll do another one of these soon. Yeah, man, that'd be great. And uh, again, like love your content, man. You're one of the most like exciting forgers I've seen on YouTube in a long time. So, really looking forward to see what it, uh, stuff comes out, man. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I got I, I've got a couple more maps probably in Halo Five, and then that'll be it. Because I think the marketing train for Infinite's gonna start only in a couple months. So, uh, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Talk to you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Catch you next time, man.